Welcome to today's math lesson on applying a scale factor to a 2D shape on a coordinate plane. As you can see, our do now reads, consider the following real numbers, list the numbers in order from least to greatest. And we have three and one third, 3.3, negative square root of 21, negative 4.5 and 60%. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is convert all of these real numbers into decimals. So three and one third is the same thing as 3.3, three, three with the three repeating. Because if I divide one divided by three, that gives me 0 0.3 with the repeating three. Then we have 3.3 is already in decimal form. And then we have negative square root of 21. If I find the square root of 21, I find out that it's 4.58. So negative square root of 21 is negative 4.58. Negative 4.5 is already in decimal form. And lastly, we have to convert 60% into a decimal. 60% is the same thing as 0 0.6 or 0 0.60. And so now we have to list the numbers in order from least to greatest. So I'm gonna start by listing the decimals in order and then I'll convert back to its original number. So I know that the bigger the negative number is, the smaller its value. So it's the opposite of the way that positive numbers work. So here we have negative 4.5 and negative 4.58. Negative 4.58 would usually be a bigger number if it were positive, but because it's negative, it's actually gonna be our smallest number. So you have negative 4.58. Next we have negative 4.5. Afterwards, we have 0 0.60. And now we have to choose between 3.333 with the repeating three or just 3.3. So 3.3 is the same thing as 3.30, which is smaller than 3.33. So I know that it's gonna be 3.3 next. And then finally, 3.3 with the repeating three. So now I can turn it back into its original form, so negative 4.58 was originally negative square root of 21. Negative 4.5 was originally negative 4.5, so I'm just gonna leave it as a decimal. 0 0.60 was 60%. 3.3 was 3.3, while 3.3 with the repeating three is three and one third. So our answer in order from least to greatest is right here. Today's TIC is 8.3C. Our lesson target is I will use an algebraic representation to write, to explain the effect of a scale factor applied to two dimensional figures on a coordinate plane. And our deal well is given four problems. I will use an algebraic representation to explain the effect of a scale factor applied to two dimensional figures on a coordinate plane with 100% accuracy. So for the effect of dilations using rational scale factors, I just want to remind us that our rule usually looks something along the lines of x comma y to, there's a number x and then a number y. If the number is less than one, that means that this dilation shrinks the transform shape. If the number is greater than one, that means that the dilation enlarges the shape. So for corresponding sides, if we had these two similar shapes or these dilated shapes, this would be the corresponding side of this one because as you can see, it's in the same place. Corresponding vertices. So this point right here would be the corresponding vertice to this point right here. Dilations are examples of similar figures since the shapes are the same, it's just the sizes are different. Congruent angles in dilated shapes, the angles are congruent. So this angle is the same measurement as this angle. 
This angle is the same measurement as this angle. And lastly, this angle is the same measurement as this angle. Proportional figures, they're proportional. Similar figures are proportional because there's a scale factor, which is the number that goes in front of the second part of the algebraic representation. The origin, of course, is the point zero comma zero. And the center of dilation is from what point that the shape is being dilated. Usually, it's gonna be the origin in our case. For this first I do, it reads that triangle ABC was dilated with the origin as a center of dilation to create triangle A comma B comma C comma. So we can see that the original triangle is this one right here. ABC, and that the dilated shape is smaller than that original triangle. So right away, I know that our scale factor is probably going to be less than one. Now we have to write the algebraic rule applied to the triangle ABC to create triangle A comma B comma C comma. So to do that, I'm going to start off with my dilated shape. I'm going to choose a point. It doesn't matter what point, but just to make it easier on us, I'm going to choose dilated B over the original B. And so I'm going to list out the coordinates of dilated B. The coordinate of dilated B is 4, positive 4, comma, negative 2. And then the coordinate of original B is 8, comma, negative 4. So from here, if I just choose either the x coordinate or the y coordinate, it doesn't matter which one, and simplify it, I would get 1 half. Because 4 over 8, I'll do it on the side. If we simplify 4 over 8, the factors of 4 are 1 times 4. The factors of 8 are 2 times 4. We can cross out the common factor, and we get 1 half. Or if I simplify negative 2 over negative 4, a negative divided by a negative is positive. And then the factors of 2 are 1 times 2. The factors of 4 are 2 times 2. Cross out the 2s. So then I'm left with 1 half. So I can see that my scale factor for both my x coordinate and my y coordinate were 1 half. So that means that my algebraic rule is going to be x comma y, 2, 1 half, x comma 1 half, y. The next I do reads quadrilateral JKML was dilated with the origin as the center of dilation to create quadrilateral J comma K comma M comma L comma. What is the algebraic rule applied to quadrilateral J, K, M, L to create the dilated triangle? That should be a J. So first I'm going to start off by highlighting what our original shape was. So in this case, as you can see, our original shape are... And because our dilated shape is bigger than that original shape, I know that our scale factor is probably going to be greater than 1. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to choose a point. We're going to first start off with the dilated point. So in this case, I'm going to choose K, dilated K, and then regular K. So I want to make sure that the points I choose, because I, it would be harder for me if I chose J, um, because J is a good point. But dilated J is not a good point because it's not at an intersection. L, dilated L is not a good point, but di or regular L is a good point because as you can see, dilated L is not at a point of intersection. We can't easily identify what is the coordinate of that point. We could have used 
M, but dilated M is kind of hard to tell. So the only good point here was K and dilated K. Okay, so starting off, I'm going to figure out what my coordinate is for dilated K. And that is 10, 10. And then for original K, we have 6, 6. So since our x coordinates and our y coordinates are the same, we can just divide 10 divided by 6. First, let's simplify it. The factors of 10 are 2 times 5. The factors of 6 are 2 times 3. We're going to cross out the common factor, which is 2. So then we're left with 5 over 3. If we divided 5 divided by 3, we'd actually get 1.666 with the 6 repeating. So we're actually just going to leave it as an improper fraction, which is fine because scale factors are sometimes written as proper or improper fractions. So we have our algebraic rules x comma y, 2, 5 over 3, x comma 5 over 3, y. We have some we do questions and some you do questions. And then finally, your DOL. Thank you so much for following along in today's math lesson and see you in the next math video. Bye.